Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 through 20. As I read, I want you to read it out loud together with me. Thank you, Jesus. Let's read it together. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, for whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in the inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And, and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have the power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know that his love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lift up your hands, give God glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to speak to you about God being my friend. Amen. God being my friend. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your presence. I thank you for this time you've given us, O oh God. Lord, as we speak from your word, Holy Spirit, help us. Lord, help us to do the great things, Lord, that you have set out to do. Father, we humble and yield ourselves for your presence. Give us insight, Holy Spirit. Enlighten our hearts and minds tonight, today morning, with your word, Father. Lord, open the hearts of your people, Holy Spirit. And I pray that we together will behold the glory of God and see the wonders that you have to do, O oh Father. Father, I give you all glory and honor and praise. I am yours and the people are yours. The word of God is yours. In Jesus' name I pray. This letter from Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 on is a simple prayer to the saints of the church. And today morning I want to bring that word to you in such a in an enlightened manner so you understand it in the depth of what it entails. The heart of Paul's prayer is a simple summary. This is Paul's prayer for verse 14. For this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom his whole family in heaven and in earth derives its name. This is a simple prayer that Paul prays and the summary of his, that prayer that summary or the thesis of that prayer, watch this, is this. Amen. Spiritual intimacy expands spiritual capacity. Hallelujah. Spiritual intimacy broadens your capacity. Let me go down a little more. Spiritual intimacy with God. Spending time in the presence of God extends the boundary of God's power in your life. Let me go one more time. Spiritual intimacy, the time you have with your Father in heaven, whether it's through reading the Word of God, whether it's praying and spending time in prayer, whether it's interceding on behalf of the church and the men of God, whether it's interceding on behalf of the saints of God, whether it is a simple you know, time and just meditating upon the Word of God, a devotion if it will be, it expands the capacity that God has for you. They were thought out of the Diviki Mord. Christo Esu and the Bishop for Lord. They were Savay, they were Savay Matamala, Ningle Egagade. Amen. Ningle Avas Tandiki Mord. They were thought of Pat Teacher Niki Mord. They were thought of Partre. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Spotter Tan. Amen. They were Savay Niki Mord. Amen. Aunt Marble, one third of everyone. Hallelujah. It expands the spiritual. Capacity. It, you have spiritual authority. Amen. Give you a simple formula in the word of God. This is the thesis of 
of Paul's prayer. And I'm going to go into it step by step. So I want you to pay attention and be alert with me today morning. So as we go together in the depth of this prayer, we're going to bring us some gems of what Paul really means through this prayer that is kneeling down on behalf of the whole family of God and heaven and earth. The formula is this. Spiritual intimacy plus spiritual capacity equals spiritual authority. Amen. The end result of intimacy with Father is that you possess power from the Father. Amen. When you have power from the Father, hallelujah, you learn to exercise the authority that God has given us in the spiritual world. Amen. 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 That's the end result of this, this simple equation that spiritual intimacy plus spiritual capacity expands spiritual authority. The role of the Holy Spirit is to make light of everything that is truth or means enlighten what is the truth. Amen. But you talk about one day. Amen. What you got it in there? What other day? Amen. Responsibility down to the barnyard. Satya the word of Purtitariwa. Satya the word of Pragasha Pikiwa. Satya Pragasha Chan of the Son of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Number two, the Holy Spirit's office, the duty of the Holy Spirit is to make or manifest God's glory and make a real experience in our life. There's a difference between me telling you how a fudge cake tastes because I'm telling you that. But if you take fudge cake and eat it, you yourself will experience the beauty of that taste. Amen. In the same manner, I could preach day and night to the next 365 year, days of the year about the glory of God and how good God is. But unless you yourself experiences the power of God, all my saying will just go in vain. You hear me today morning, right? Amen. I hope so. Hallelujah. Amen. Watch this now. The Holy Spirit's role in our life is to show what is the truth and bring God's glory and reality in our life. Let me give you a real good example. You've seen popcorn, correct? Have you seen the curl of the popcorn? Amen? It's very small. Pay attention, it's very small. But can you tell me why the popcorn pops or the kernel pops? Why is that? Why is that? You put it in the microwave and you hear pop, 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 pop. You hear all that. Why is it popping? Why is that? The heat is there. Yes, that's one of the elements that is that is in a factor of its popping, but in the kernel, there is moisture in the kernel. Amen? And in the kernel, once the moisture gets hot, steam builds around it. And once steam builds around it, it doesn't know anything else to do but pop, explode. You know what it does? The popcorn gets deliverance. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. The popcorn gets what? Deliverance. When you see the popcorn pop, you see little of the inside, but more of the outside. You hear me say the morning church of God? Simple analogy, simple example. Today morning, our objective is not to learn how to be a friend of God, but as we are being a friend of God, we need to possess the spiritual authority that our great friend has. Amen. Amen. We are kernels in the church of God. A lot of rare popcorns are sitting here. Amen. Amen. We have kernels all over the house of God. But when are we going to pop and let the inner side come out and say, God, the little of me to show, but more. 
more of you to see. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit's role in this manner is what is this? It is to manifest God's glory and show that we, there is a real experience in the inside of us. It's not just talking, but we are walking the talk that we are saying. Hallelujah. You know, I want to talk about you in the morning. Are we controlled by our outer experience? Are we controlled by our outer experience? Does our outer experience control who we are? Does it? Amen. Then you have not popped yet. Hallelujah. Amen. The moment the, the, the moisture gets steamed up, there's nowhere else to go but it's to pop out its shell. There's nowhere it needs to go. It cannot stay in that, in that, in that shell anymore. It needs to come out. Hallelujah. The perfect example of this, you know, when I think about the scripture, I can think about is Peter. Again, our friend Peter. Peter was the one who betrayed our Father, our Jesus Christ. Peter is the one who wanted to go and then go back, you know, and be a back fisherman. But Peter, on the day of Pentecost, he rose up and spoke a word. 3,000 people were added to the church. It's the same Peter that we read across the scripture. It's the same Peter that warmed himself in the fire. It's the same Peter that betrayed Jesus Christ, not once, twice, but three times. But it's the same Peter that God used as, and it says, Peter, I'm going to build my church upon a rock. Hallelujah! We need to be intimate with our Father so our capacity could expand so we can house the authority of God in our day-to-day -day life. Church of God, we cannot be just content with where we are. We cannot be just satisfied with what we have. We cannot just say, this is enough. We need more than this. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, we have a good man of God. We, you know, everything goes routinely. Everything goes well. It's okay. This is enough. I say, Lord, this is not enough. Who will stand and say, God, this is not enough. There's more than this, God. So, so the word of God says, you will do more things than I did. Amen. Today morning, how many of you will say, Lord, my spiritual capacity has shrunk and therefore the power of God is very limited in my life. Isn't that a reality in our life? Isn't that the truth in our life? Amen. Songs will not expand your spiritual capacity. Worship will not just expand your spiritual capacity. Those are the elements that drive you to the throne of God and open the doors of worship. But spiritual intimacy will expand your horizon in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. We pray for harvest with the little that we sow. Amen. We pray for rain, but the little we tarry for rain. We pray for a revival, but when revival comes, we don't want to be even near it. Our words don't match up with our actions. It's dangerous. Amen. It's dangerous. Why? Because watch this. The Greek word to dwell is to make a home. Watch this now. I want to talk to you about this. We need to understand it is our intimacy with God that determines the authority that we have as a Christian, as a believer in the house of God. Don't, have, don't raise your hands because I know many of you probably won't. Just ask yourself today morning, your time with your Father in heaven, how much was it? We start this year off, right? How much did we lay everything aside? 
secondary. All those things are secondary, Father. I'm going to sit before your presence and just receive from you. Amen? How many of us are ready to do that? Hallelujah. That is where the victory is. Doesn't matter who comes here. The ball's in your hand. Amen? I could jump and preach and do cartwheels across the road, but the ball is in your hand. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah! I could do great, fantastic preaching in this house of God. Even most of you have probably never heard before, but that will do anything for us. You want to pop out of your kernel? You have to say, Lord, send the fire of the Holy Spirit in my life. You know, we are so comfortable, brothers, in our seats. Isn't that right? The two, three hours we come here and we go back. How many of the popcorn popped today morning? Amen. How many, how many go back the same way? The kernel they came in, the kernel people go back out. Have you eaten kernel before? They got the kernel. Amen. A popcorn, but no big kernel down there. I did. Part of the water heart. I'm gonna do this. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Kernel water heart. Today we did it. Kind of water up, but it trades you part of the year. Kind of into a 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 part of the year. Amen. The moment you see the power of the Holy Spirit, that person's face will change. It's what the heart reflects is what the face sees. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Right? The face is a mirror that reflects what your heart says. You sit there, you know what the heart is talking to you about today morning. Amen. Watch the spiritual, spiritual intimacy plus spiritual capacity equals spiritual authority. Paul is praying this simple prayer and the thesis of his prayer is, Father, let this church, this folk see and exercise the spiritual authority that is in your word. Amen. You know, we can read all the scriptures we want to. It's only a scripture there. But the moment the scripture jumps into our heart and changes us, nothing will happen. Amen. Hallelujah. We had Friday morning, and was a part of the name, and then we would talk about that. Amen. What a business person, and a businessman. Amen. That is, what is Allah? This is Yamaraj in the Vekti. Amen. What a convention point. What a association of Maha Yoga Tri point. Point, I am going to teach you on the phone, and it's negative to you. You know what occurred to them? Indoa passing and passing each other day, and then a summary in the world, yet no girl. A compiler of children's upon you could not train. We pork in the law, but yet they cut end up and a cut down marching lane. You can get cutting marching lane and sort of the both. Other ones like it. Amen. I let cutting marching and a cutting and a get a question to one. ശക്തിയായിരിക്കും <laughs> the water roar and 
the waves clash and the waves smash, you know, and, and, and the wind blows to the, 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 the shore. It's so calm. It really calms us down. But if I take, and this is an example to prove you that spiritual capacity expounds and shrinks, okay? If I take a small little shot glass and I bring it to the, the, the brink of the Pacific Ocean and I, and I dip it in there and I pick it up, I have a little piece of what? The Pacific Ocean. Not all of it, a little of it. Why? Because my container could only hold that, that volume. Next year I come over there and I bring a small glass, a 12 ounce paper glass, and I go come there and I dip it into the, into the Pacific Ocean and I hold it up. Now I have a little bit more of the Pacific Ocean, but not the entire thing. Amen. I drop that tomorrow morning, I bring a bucket and I dip it in the Pacific Ocean and I put it into the water and I pull it up. I have a, 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 not all of it, but some of the Pacific Ocean in my head. It's bigger than the shot glass, it's bigger than the, the glass, now I have a bucket. But did the Pacific Ocean empty itself out? No. Nope. Amen. I drop the bucket and bring a tanker tomorrow. Now I dip it in there and the tanker sucks up the water. The tanker is full of the Pacific Ocean. But did the Pacific Ocean dry up? No, but I have a piece of it. I have a lot more than shot glass. I have a lot more than the glass. I have a lot more than the bucket. And I have a lot more from where I started. What is my point? My point is this. The Pacific Ocean, we can never run out. It doesn't dry out. But it depends on what kind of thing or object you bring to fill your, your capacity up. You get my, you get me today, right? Hallelujah. You pray for revival, watch this. But Lord, I have a shot glass in my hand. Well, that's the power that God's going to give you. That's it. Because you have a shot glass in your hand. God, I'm praying for revival. And Lord, my capacity is just small. But I'm praying for revival. Guess what? It is your capacity that God nothing more than that if I bring a bucket it's going to be handling only the volume of the bucket not the tanker because I didn't bring the tanker I brought the bucket and I'm standing in front of the Pacific Ocean trying to drink it up trying to fill myself up as more you sit with the Father the capacity and Lord it has nothing to do with your age I've seen the elderly people who have little power, less than a shot glass. I've seen young people who have sh really shined for God, whose capacity is beyond limit. It has nothing to do with age. It has everything to do with your position. Amen. Nothing to do with your age. It has a lot to do with your experience. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Church of God today morning. We want the power of God. We pray these great prayers with great terminologies, with great vocabularies. We pray such great things and in such eloquence and you know such majestic things. But Lord, the capacity is so small that when He pours it, it's so tiny. And we expect to do great things with some tiny authority. Why? Because the intimacy is not there with the Father. Let me ask you an honest question. Do you come to be intimate with the Father only on Sunday? Is that right? Some of us have that experience, right? Monday through Saturday, we don't pick up the Bible. And then Sunday, we rush out to pick the Bible, dust it off, and come to church. And then we open the Bible after eight days in church. You cannot grow. Is that right? You cannot grow. It's, it's, a, it's an honest truth. This is... You know, I, maybe you like it or not, but that's, that's not my point. You cannot grow. But you're praying for great things to happen, but we don't want to grow. You want to feel, we want to see God's glory come down to this church, but we don't want to grow. We want to see great things happen in our life, in our generation, but we don't want to grow. We want the Pacific Ocean, but we don't want to fill, take the time to fill. 
Why? Because it's too hard. It takes too long. That discipline is not there. But today morning, let this year be a year of order and discipline in the house of God for His glory. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to see God's glory. And this church wants to see God's glory in the book of Ephesians. And Paul is saying, my God, your glory is readily available. But the problem is, spiritual intimacy is absent. Therefore, spiritual capacity has shrunk. And therefore, spiritual authority cannot be exercised. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's go to verse 20. As you do that, you. If you still get a leg of the day with them. Now who is able to do immeasurably more than we all ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. We like him more. We love feeding of Kelly. Amen? I think they added their understanding of the white children. But you know, not showing the thing. Naked in cartel. Oh, a father could care for the mother will live. Pradisha Kia. Amen. Number Pratik or other Kia, the fifteen of Pratik of the Hallelujah. Amen. Number Parambo, a Rubera Kurkia, and a Kurkia Parambo, the Kaparana Pratik, the Paranja, the Dinipatu, and one of the Kekan, Nalla Spritamaya, Nalla Spritamala, one day walking the fifteen more. Amen. Don't you think for a moment that revival is by the door? Amen. Hallelujah. Stop them. One time, amen, we can say that, we can feel good about it, but the thing is this, we do not have spiritual intimacy, therefore our capacity is gone, and therefore there is no authority to exercise. But it feels so good to repeat that. It brings excitement in our spirit and in our emotions. Doesn't it? Amen. Doesn't mean anything. Hallelujah. Church of God. It's a little, it's a little coming out of the angle of the, you know, the tough love, but this is sometimes we need that. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to speak this is a surely word so you can jump up and down and shout and then go back home and come back the same way. There's no point of that. Hallelujah. Church of God. Where are you? Believers. Where are we? We're coming to a generation. To a young generation, you are living in a generation where the word of God is being faded out in the background. It's being faded out. You know, one board called me uh, last you know, this week to have a, a meeting with me. It's a it's a it's a known board of, of our, our organization in, in, in Houston. It's our finality board. Who knows everything? The pastor, you know, we call all these pastors together and we wanted to have, you know, your word on this. You know, what do you think about the future of the, such organization? So I think, I think I said it has a good future. Well, pastor, you know, what is your, uh, you know, in your church, since you're the pastor of the church, you know, what do you think, you know, is the most important thing? Because one petty pastor said, you know, we need help with praise and worship. I said, what? Oh, really? I said, everybody knows how to sing. They're great singers. In fact, our children have so much talent they can knock off American Idol off the platform that they could get, get on. I believe that. There's some of the some really good singers in the Pentecostal religion. There are so much great singers that will blow your socks. Amen? There are great drummers and great pianists and great, great guitarists and great violinists and we have great worship. Praise and worship. And that's what they said. In Houston, they, that's what they said. I said, no, I disagree with that. Completely true. I believe the generation needs to be taught the word of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's what they need. And they, and they were shocked. I came from an angle from the south that they didn't think of. Amen. But that's the truth. I'll tell you something right now. If we go to dance life somewhere in the black community or in the white community or in the Asian community or in the Latino community and they ask us three questions, we will stumble. We will stumble. Because we don't know our material. We don't know our foundation. We don't know what the real word of God entails. Because we miss the power of God. Because our capacity has shrunk. And because there's no intimacy with the Father. I came out of reverse way from that. Amen? 
Hallelujah. We need to teach the word of God in the way the word of God was written. Hallelujah. You know, in the church of God, we come to a generation where the word of God has been fading out. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Amen. Some of us are there. Hallelujah. Word of God is what sustains us. Church of God, the word of God is what sets you free. Come on now. Hallelujah. The word of God is what gives you power. The word of God is what liberates you for tomorrow's storm. The word of God is what you need to be taught that more than anything else. This generation needs nothing else but go back to the basics and learn that the Holy Spirit is still vibrant and is still alive in the 21st century. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen! They are they going to learn? I'm not fashion preacher, so I think you get that now. Amen. Hallelujah. What are they going to learn? Amen. I'm not putting my hand on my Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Put the man in the eye of the chapel. Eye of the devil. Who's the man who's going to do Oh Lord. Amen. Even though I was not there, heard what great testimonies and miracles that happened in those tiny meetings. Who came through? They opened their heart for capacity to fill it. Amen. Amen, church of God. Hallelujah. Who came through? The Holy Spirit comes through when the door is open and let Him do the work. Amen. Amen. The intimacy part is not an option. It is a must for to live a life that is vibrant according to the calling that God has for you. We can kneel all we want. We can pray all we want. We can fast all we want. But the moment you say, God, I'm going to let my knowledge down and open up my heart to see your glory. The moment you unlock the doors of your heart and unlock the doors of your mind and unlock the doors of your reserved life and say, God, come into my house. Come into my house. You are not the guest, but you are the frequent visitor. You are not the guest, but you are the owner of this residence. Hallelujah. When we, when we have guests come into our house, when we have guests come into our house, what do we say? Oh, make yourself that? Oh. If I came to your house, you said that to me. Can I go to your bedroom and can I go to your office and... And can I go into your bathroom and do all these things? No. So what is the definition of make yourself at home? Make yourself at home in the rooms that is allowed for you. You hear that? <laughs> Amen. You hear that? Make yourself at home. So that means I can go anywhere I want and do anything I want. Because in my home I do that. Alright? No. When we tell God to make himself at home, and there's a reserved room at the heart of our hearts that he can enter into. We constricted the living room. We constricted the family room of our life. But the very rooms that he needs to go and cleanse, he's absent. And we pray for revival. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In the Lord, in God, they will deliver me. Namor ya aradhana, namor sthotanga. Amen. Namor ya aradhana, the mahot mara na yemo pastranda. Amen. To aradhana mahot worship team anda. Aradhana mahot mati ani ullu. Al sokesna ya raj raj. Amen. Awe na thejas pratisha pranenge. Awe na mahot. I want
What do you do when unexpected events happen in your life? What do you do? What do you naturally do? What do you naturally do? Shout and pout and tell all about it. Amen? What do we do? We get discouraged. We get, you know, we get so, uh, so sad in our hearts and broke our hearts. You know, and the thing is this. My question is, is what happened to authority? What happened to your spiritual authority? What happened to your praise and worship? Praise and worship goes in every season. Amen. When I think of praise and worship, I think of all season tires. You know, in the New Jersey, New York area, we have all season tires. It is able to go through the, the dry climate, through the wet climate, and through the snowy climate. All season tires. Praise and worship is all season tires. The word of God is all season tires. Hallelujah. It never stops. It always goes. Today morning, I want to give you an example. There was a great crusade that happened in, in South Carolina, in Carolina, in Indiana. And one of the greatest, one of the great preachers in Dallas came for a crusade. They booked the stadium on the day of the of the crusade. The, the weather climate, the forecast said it was going to rain, it was going to pour. <clears throat> and the skies got growing darker and strong. The wind is blowing. So a couple of local pastors and their laymen came to the stadium before the meeting and they began to pray. This is a real thing that happened. A real thing that happened. I know the man of God is the preach them. And when the local pastors start to Pray, God, please, Lord, we have this crusade that's happening. Lord, would you help us, Lord, with souls? And it's your will to move the rain out. It's a great theory prayer, right? The object of the meeting is to win souls. But the next line really baffled me and dumbfounded me. If it's your will, move the rain. So, Everybody said amen, and a small lady of 5'2", of my height, named Linda, said, may I please pray? And they all looked at her and said, yeah. And she began to pray. The Lord, your word declares, where two or three are gathered, you are in our midst. Lord, your word declares that we need to win souls. And this meeting is for that objective. Father, I command that this weather be cleared out. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All the great pastors looked at her. And they looked at each other. Amen. The crusade started. The praise and worship came on the platform. The, the men of God came on the platform. And they all sing on the platform. The, the sky is getting darker. And the wind is coming straight. So the, the MC said, we will sit here as long as we can sit, and after that we will depart. So let's sit here as much as we can. And we took the umbrella, and they opened the door. Linda is sitting on the platform all the way in the back. She doesn't have an umbrella. And the person next to her shared his umbrella with her. You know what she said? I don't want it. I don't. And the word of God is on her, on her lap. Amen. Watch this. Small scattered showers begin to fall. And everybody opened it. All 25,000 people are at the stadium. And all the folks in the world are except for the media. This really happened. The sky came so dark and scattered showers came started falling. But when it came to the top of that stadium, this open stadium, one of the clouds went to the left, the other cloud went to the right, and began to storm down rain on the left and right side of the stadium. And they gathered together in the front of the stadium, and they went forward. Not one single drop fell in that stadium that night. We need more than does in the church of God. We need more Lindas in the Church of God. Can you stand up in the house of God today, Lord?